Today's training will cover the GSI VEMP Biofeedback Monitor. The Biofeedback Monitor is intended to be used for patient EMG measurement when recording CVEMPs. It provides a visual signal corresponding to the status or the amount of the patient's muscle activity, and it provides a visual target for the patient to achieve as they voluntarily control the muscle tension. It is an optional accessory. Monitoring during CVAMP allows for quantifying the amount of muscle contraction during a VAMP collection, and therefore would allow you to compare the muscle contraction between sides. It also allows you to confirm that the patient can actually achieve a minimum of 30 to 50 microvolts of EMG when performing CVAMP. So a significant contraction is required in order to collect this potential. The biofeedback monitor comes with a tablet PC with the software already installed, a tripod with a mounting bracket, and a carrying case. The entire assembly only weighs about two pounds, so it's very easily moved about the test suite. It also comes with a biosignal hub that the patient wears and an EMG sensor cable. This is what it looks like assembled. The electrodes that you see here would be placed on the patient's neck and sternum. While the wireless hub is communicating with the tablet, the patient is a, should be able to view the biofeedback screen and monitor the, the amount of muscle contraction. The system also comes with Y cables. These allow for using one snap electrode for the dual purpose of recording the EMG and the CVAMP. So it's done at the same time and you only need one lead. So to use these cables, you want to locate the single snap end and connect that to the snap electrode. This is what's going to go on the patient's neck and sternum. The dual side connects to the patient cable and the EMG sensor cable. So here you can see an example on a patient where the snap electrode is located on the muscle of the patient's right side and it splits where half of it, the Y portion, half of it connects to the EMG sensor cable and the other to the snap electrode lead cable. And the same goes for the white sternum electrode. One, one electrode on the sternum, and it splits to the EMG sensor cable and the patient cable. And here's another view of this when testing the left side. So when you turn on the tablet, you want to tap the GSI icon, and that will get you to the home screen. The first time you use it, you'll have to pair the biofeedback hub to the tablet by going into the settings screen. In settings you simply have to press the scan button while the, the hub is on and the device MAC address will appear. Next you have to decide or set up the targets and the range that the patient is going to achieve during the biofeedback. There are two options. One is a relative or patient specific option where you determine the amount of maximum contraction and the target you wish your patient to achieve, the percent of maximum with a plus or minus of your range. The range directly affects the size of the target that the patient will be looking at. The other way to set the target is using absolute values. So you can put in a fixed microvolt that you want your patient to achieve and arrange plus or minus in microvolts. If you're going to use absolute values, you may want to review the literature, maybe find some published norms for EMG or collect your own. In this article, using the optimal activation technique pictured here, Normative data was determined for pediatric, young adult, and older adults for EMG amplitude. The pediatric patients were able to achieve, on average, 350 microvolts average EMG versus an older adult where the average was 250 microvolts. So there is a difference between patients. 
So once you've paired it, you know it's paired because you'll see under the sensors window of the home screen a green check mark. So that indicates you're good to go. You're going to connect the EMG monitor cable to the snap electrodes on the patient's neck, confirm this connection, instruct the patient what they're going to do, um, turn their head and lift and hold off the table, and then you're going to press the start button. If you're using patient-specific targets, you'll get to the maximum voluntary contraction screen. And when you get to this test screen, you'll see this blue bar will be bouncing around and that corresponds to the EMG of the patient. Once it's relatively stable, you're going to set, tap on the set MVC icon and the play button will appear. If the patient is having trouble with the task or you need to re-instruct to reset this value, you simply press the monitor button and that will reset this, the MVC. So once that's done, you're ready to proceed with the test. This is, after you press play, the EMG target screen that the patient will be viewing. The green bar represents the patient's EMG when it's in the target range. When it's blue, the EMG is not in the target range. The target is actually the orange box. So the patient can watch the bar, keep it green, or watch the target. So if you remember from the setup screen, the size of your target will depend on the range that you've placed in the, in the settings. You'll also be able to view the real-time EMG. Once the test is done, you press the pause button and that'll get you to the final screen, which is the time in target. You'll be able to see it in percent as well as seconds. The percent of time does not include the first five seconds and the last five seconds. So if you're practicing and it seems like you've been doing the task for a while, keep that in mind. That gives you time to re-instruct the patient um, before and after the test. The time in target is not saved on the tablet, so if you want to report that or keep track of that, you need to record that paper pencil. Okay, so let's review. Once the tablet's been paired, and that you only have to do one time usually. You're going to launch the software. You'll get to the home screen. You're going to press the start button. If you're using relative values or patient specific values, you'll get to the maximum voluntary contraction screen. You'll set that MVC. Then you'll see the biofeedback screen. This is what your patient, you want your patient to view. And then the final screen is the time and target. If you use absolute microvolts values, you will not see the MVC screen. So when you press the start button, it'll go right to the biofeedback screen for the patient to view. So in review, you're going to prep the skin and apply the snap leads to the locations shown here. You're going to connect the EMG sensor and the patient cable to the red, blue, and white Y cables. Turn on the hub and the tablet and confirm it's connected. You're going to ask your patient to lift their head and hold it there. And this is what's contracting their muscle and set the MVC if you're using uh, patient specific. Then you're going to instruct the patient to maintain the contraction during the, in the target area. And this might take a little bit of practice and re-instruction. But once you've uh, started the test and they know what to do, you're going to record your CVEMPs while the patient monitors the EMG, both sides. And then when you're done, you're going to launch the VEMP module to mark and analyze the results. Thank you for tuning in and have a great day.